हेल्प सो हेलो एवरी वन कैन यू हेयर मी या थैंक्स थैंक्स सो थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस एंड वी हैव आर नेक्स्ट टॉक बाय उषा रेंगर राज हु इज अ प्रिंसिपल डेटा साइंटिस्ट एट इन्फाइट सा मॉडलिंग सो द टॉक इज मशीन लर्निंग ऑन डी सेंट्रलाइज डेटा यूजिंग टेंसर फ्लो फेडरेटेड सो जस्ट अ फ्यू फ्यू हेड्स अप so if the attendees have any question they can post in the uh, qna uh, qna tab uh, they can put their questions in the post their question in the qna tab of the session so if uh, so at at the end of the talk if we have uh, some time left uh, we can uh, take the speaker can take those questions or you can uh, you can post your questions in the zulip chat to the speaker yeah so that's all uh, so just, so i don't know i don't know usha personally but uh, i have seen her uh, i have seen that she is very active on kaggle and around kaggle community communities and also on linkedin so i am really excited for this talk uh, hope you are too so the, so usha the stage yeah thank you so much for the introduction and i uh, before i start i thank the entire organizing team for giving me uh, this wonderful opportunity and uh, coming to this today's topic it's uh, about tensorflow federated and uh, federated learning in general what is federated learning this is a very short uh, tutorial we are just touching the uh, surface of federated learning and just a very basic of uh, tensorflow federated uh, but this is a very advanced and little complicated topic as you or delve deeper uh, this is a beginner level session i'm just introducing the topic to you and there are a lot of tutorials which i'll point it uh, point out to and uh, maybe you can uh, delve deeper and uh, if you feel uh, there are a lot of tensorflow apis which we will be looking at you know you need to know the basics of tensorflow dot data sets and lot of apis and uh, just in case uh, if you're not able to or if you've not worked in tensorflow at all before and if you're a python user i'll just point you to the right resources uh, which uh, will help you understand what those uh, small basic concepts are and about me is already introduced and i'm also a community organizer where uh, i organize around eight communities in bangalore and mysuru and uh, these are all free meetups we conduct often and uh, you can go and there is a meetup link uh, in these slides which you can go and uh, join and uh, you can follow me on twitter at u rangaraju and um yeah let's get uh, started with the topic so there's a lot of data uh, before i uh, start the topic uh, i've uh, reused some of the uh, slides materials i recently attended a workshop at uh, conducted by the uh, scientist at uh, google brain research uh, on federated learning i was uh, fortunate enough to get an opportunity to attend that and um, there's also a tensorflow federated talk in the uh, defes summit in 2019 and uh, so i've reused some of the uh, materials from uh, both these slides uh, so the pictures and uh, the diagrams graphics used in this uh, my slides are uh, from the uh, workshop at tensorflow uh, workshop conducted by brain research team and yeah and uh, so there is lot of data which is in the edge if you see any example if you take if you take a self driving car uh, so there is lot of data being generated on the edge devices and uh, there is lot of data and if you want we live in the era where the edge devices are dominating you take any example for example a person is wearing this fitbit there is lot of data which is getting generated user generated data so the edge devices are dominating there's billions of devices is this, this we live in the era of uh, edge computing so this edge computing is going to rule the uh, next few uh, upcoming years as well and uh, one thing is one uh, particular uh, complexity which arises is the general uh, scenario where uh, how you uh, do uh, machine learning training is you have a server 
where in your server your data resides and your machine learning algorithm also resides in your server and you have a local edge device where your local data is there so every time a new data is generated the data has to be uh, you know uh, every time there's a client request maybe the edge the device is requesting some uh, data from the client the edge device has to send a request to the uh, you know centralized server and the centralized server will process it and then send the feedback so there's a lot of latency involved uh, so imagine a scenario where uh, you are dri- doing a t- self driving car uh, can you afford that kind of a latency a uh, self driving car is supposed to be a uh, use case where the you cannot afford that kind of a latency you you has to be very very quick and uh, this is not just self driving car there are other critical applications where you know going back uh, the edge devices are generating lot of data and the data has to travel to the server and the server has to compute and it has to come back so you know this back and forth itself is creating lot of complexity and um, not every time you know you will get the right signal so a lot of issues which and this going back and forth when your data is going back and forth there's a lot of privacy concerns also involved so these are some of the uh, advantages which uh, some of the concerns which you need to uh, think about when you have go with a traditional model where you have an edge device which generates data which send request to the server coming back and all what if you do ai on edge if you're going to do ai computing on the edge device itself then that gives you a lot of advantages first thing is it's very quick you don't have to uh, depend on your centralized server going back and forth it's very quick and uh, you can work offline because you're not connected to any centralized uh, server and stuff and you have advantages with privacy nobody can you know infuriate your network and steal your data and all that and better battery life i mean you lose lot of battery because you're sending the record was back and forth so these are some of the advantages of uh, ai on the edge and uh, so this whole uh, concept of uh, federated learning is uh, there are several techniques of uh, federated learning so today's uh, federated learning in itself is a very complex and advanced topic uh, but uh, being able to cover that kind of an advanced topic it, uh, the brain research workshop which i attended was 4.5 hours workshop something like 5 hours and even in that 5 hours like it was only the basics uh so teaching something in a short one hour is like we're just uh touching the surface not even touching the surface like it's a very uh, scratch and i've uh, simplified this workshop for even somebody who does know machine learning should be able to follow it through uh, the workshop is simplified in that way uh so there are several types of uh, federated learning and uh, we just going to see one type of uh, self related learning which is cross device federated learning and um, so this is an initial uh, model okay um, so you have an option where uh, this is a place where uh, you know you you have a server and uh, in your server you have your model so the federated learning works such that you have a model in your server and uh, initially the model is trained on some random uh, simulated data and uh, you generate this model and this model is being sent to the local clients so local clients can be your uh, mobile devices so the model is being sent to several uh, devices here and once the sev- uh, model is being first the model is uh, trained with some random data and is being sent to the client so the client will have a local user data so what this client will do the client will train its data on the model and it will have some once it's trained what it will do is it will send it back to the server we are not dealing with just one client we are dealing with multiple clients so the multiple clients will generate that take that model and it will run it on its local data and send that uh, newly generated model back to the server 
so now the server is getting this uh, you know modified model from multiple clients you should also remember when you are dealing with use cases like mobile and all that uh, so at uh, any given point see uh, um, uh, the server cannot connect with two mobile phones of everyone on the planet at the same time lot of people you know that time they wouldn't have uh, switched on the option to connect to the server and all that so at any given point there are only few devices where uh, the server is connected to and uh, so the individual mobile phones they will get the data from the model from the uh, server and they'll train it on their local data and the newly generated model they're sending it back to the server at the server what you're doing you're doing an operation called federated averaging where you're averaging this uh, all the models which are coming from multiple uh, mobile devices you're averaging it and you're generating new model that is using federated averaging technique now you will be this federated first time you do this federated averaging model after federated averaging this model will not be that great again this new model whatever you generate again you will send it to the client the client will retrain again so this process will happen thousands to 10000 times this process will happen back and forth so one of the use cases is uh, you are using this mobile phone if when you use this mobile uh, phone keypad Uh, it is like showing artificial intelligence, right? Uh, see, uh, in the, uh, in, like you type two, three letters, then automatically they showing you recommendation. How these things are happening? It is happening using uh, federated learning. This Google Keypad and all these is uses federated learning. This is all happening using this technically. I'll just uh, this is the backbone of the uh, hands-on exercise which we are going to uh, deal later. so i'll just uh, rephrase whatever this concept we have discussed so far so in federated learning so in a traditional machine learning what you do is your data and your algorithm machine learning model sits on the server so whenever an edge device or some um, client it wants uh, it will it wants something uh, certain operations to get done it will send a request to the server server will uh, you know process the request and you know send back the feedback this is a traditional process so your algo model and your data sits on the server this is a traditional uh, scenario but uh, how is it different from the federated learning in federated learning you have a model in the server and uh, initially first time when you're starting you start out with the random uh, data and uh, now the model uh, first travels to the mobile devices so in each of the mobile devices the local data sits so this has lot of advantages if you see uh, see we are not able to deal with lot of real time see healthcare artificial intelligence are cutting edge algorithms coming out from 2019 2020 there are a super powerful algorithms which has come out and uh, with given the powerful nature of these algorithms we can solve lot of problems in healthcare so we have a lot and lots of problems in healthcare and the most of the developing countries particularly india we have a lot of shortage of doctors to uh, patients ratio if we can solve all these problems in healthcare using ai then uh, you know we can reduce uh, so many people will get saved so many people's life will get uh, impacted but what is uh, preventing us from applying these ml models to uh, healthcare data is the anonymization see you can't just deal with a lot of cases we are not able to get the healthcare data for the research the data is available but the pro problem with healthcare data is you will have to anonymize a user's identity and uh, there's a lot of uh, you know um, the user has to give uh, you know uh, approval and a lot of uh, complications involved in getting the healthcare data sets a lot of time it's unethical and uh, you will not be able to get the individual patient's data and a lot of times it's not possible because we are not able to get the uh, data you patient's data owing to privacy concerns we are not able to solve or uh, you know deal with many of the applications in a healthcare and uh, if we can resolve this problem of privacy in all these areas imagine how many problems can be solved and you know healthcare ai in healthcare revolution can start so federated learning definitely has a scope in lot of these areas and uh, so here if you observe uh, the data is there in the mobile device the data is not traveling 
so this privacy is mentioned only the model will travel to the uh, mobile phone and it will train on the local data new model is getting generated it will go back so there is privacy which is being preserved here and uh, once you uh, once this first time when the model comes back to the server it's not that accurate you for it is coming from multiple devices there's a federating averaging process which happens and a new model is getting generated and it is stored in the server this process will happen back and forth thousands to 10000 times based on the use case you are dealing with to actually get a model which is stabilized and works well for example if you use a google keypad with intelligence where you type some letters and it automatically gives you the suggestions it takes something where between 1000s to 10000 iterations to achieve that uh, kind of a uh, feature so this is federated learning in nutshell we're going to see a simple uh, use case of federated learning and uh, little mercy this is federated learning is an active area of research and there are a lot of uh, things about it you see there's a lot to see when you model travels back and forth there are a lot of things which you need to deal with model compression and uh, you know see now the uh, training is happening on the edge devices so there are a lot of factors like quantization how do you optimize uh, model optimizing there is a lot of uh, sub areas involved in federated learning federated learning is not as simple as we are discussing in the tutorial it's a very advanced topic and there are a lot of things to it and um, how does the model generalize there are a lot of other uh, things which you need to deal about and this is rapidly evolving as well we are in the early stages of this uh, movement and um, it's an open so tensorflow federated is an open source library you can also contribute to it and uh, it's a good ecosystem with good set of tutorials and support and there are a lot of tensorflow data sets available for you to start experimenting there are five to six uh, simulated data sets available as a part of the ecosystem itself and uh, which you can try it out and you know get your learning curve faster as well i'll show you where the tensorflow simulated data sets sits and uh, one more thing is it's architecture agnostics it's like uh, you know it's not like uh, you can you, you can apply to a particular architecture only and uh, so it's architecture agnostics and uh, this is one of the advantage of uh, tensorflow federated so if you take tensorflow federated there are basically two main components one is the federated learning api and the other one is uh, federated core api these are the two main uh, components of federated uh, learning federated learning api and federated uh, core api so federated learning api is where all your uh, you know see if you have a tensorflow federated if you have a tensorflow model and if you have a tensorflow data you need to apply the federated learning algorithm training and evaluation and all these things are presented in the uh, present in the tensorflow federated and uh, tensorflow core is where you can generate new federated algorithms and it is a local runtime for simulations and all that we will be looking a hands on right now hope you have understood the at this point of time you should at least have a, a basic understanding of what the context and what is the traditional way of learning and why there is uh, federated learning and what is tensorflow federated and uh, what are the main components of tensorflow federated which is federated learning and federated code and uh, this is uh, something which is basic this is uh, just a slide where uh, you know which maps like uh, who fits into which uh, so the uh, how uh, different uh, ml engineers and federated learning researchers and system researchers and system developers fit into which component and how they can get uh, involved and so the take away from here is you need to understand there are two apis one is federated learning api and what it does federated core api and what is this this is the basics which you need to understand at this point of time and i'm going to also show you this uh, hands on exercise
So this, I have pasted my notebook in the session feed. Uh, what you need to do is, see, uh, you need to do is, uh, you need to go to file and you need to uh, click on, uh, you know, uh, save a copy in drive and uh, you need to execute the new copy. The reason why uh, you should execute the new copy is, uh, if you execute my copy, then it will get crashed. Last time, I, to, uh, day before yesterday, I was giving a workshop where everyone was uh, executing my uh, notebook and it was not working. So go to file, uh, create a save a copy in drive, create a new link and start executing the code. So I've shared the link in the... Uh, uh this thing what is it chat session feed now i'll show you this i told you there are some simulated data sets if you're a beginner and you want to uh you know get started with tensorflow So if you go to the official uh, documentation tutorial, you will be able to see the API. And uh, in the API, uh, you have something called uh, TFF. And you have something called TFF simulation. Under TFF simulation, you have something called data sets. Uh, where you have this MNS. MNS is nothing but this handwritten digit classification, which is a simulated data set available for you to, uh, if you're learning TensorFlow Federated for the first time and you want some data set which is already in the right model, which you can pass it to the Federated Learning Pipelines, then you have some simulated data set for MNS and SIFAR 100 is for the uh, uh, images and you also have text related data like stack overflow data set and Shakespeare poetry generation and you have some more data sets this GLD is this from Kaggle and uh, this is uh, this is from this uh, Google uh, uh, data sets where you know they had this Google landmark uh, V2 data set. This is from Kaggle. So this uh, data set also, which is available, which is in the format, which you can start experimenting. And if you want to create your own data set also, you have the API, how you know you can create a data set which you can readily use. You can make use of these APIs as well. And uh, this particular tutorial uh, requires basic understanding of uh, TensorFlow, df.data.data .data .data sets, and basic understanding that you have worked in, uh, uh, what to say, uh, TensorFlow before. Or if you don't know, if you don't understand any part, then you can always come back to uh, the uh, TensorFlow core tutorials, and you will be able to uh, find the documentation and, you know, pick it up from there. And... Let's get back to the hands-on notebook. So whatever we learned in the uh, tutorial, we're going to uh, see a quick uh, hands-on walkthrough. This first part is we are installing the TensorFlow. See, uh, hope everyone is creating a save a copy in Drive and uh, running your local copy. And uh, the first piece of code is we are installing the required libraries. TensorBoard is for visualization of, you know, how your model is converging, how you can visualize some of your model parameters, experiment with some of it and see the visualization. And for that reason, we are installing the TensorFlow board and uh, we are also installing the packages related to TensorFlow Federated. And uh, this, uh, this piece of code is what uh, you is doing that. Once you install the external libraries required, you install, import the needed uh, packages all the matplotlib for visualization tensorflow federated and all you uh, in, import the necessary uh, packages which is required so what is this tutorial going to contain is first you're loading the tff related uh, libraries then you're exploring the simulated data which is already available for you mns right the data you're exploring how the data looks like and all that then you're creating a model 
so uh, creating a normal keras model and creating a tensorflow federated learning model which you can use in the pipeline as two different things which we will be looking at and you are analyzing this uh, metrics use then we will be analyzing the metrics using tensorboard and then we will be evaluating and we'll also lead our learn a little bit about what is normal model in a traditional setting you will be using metrics and here you will be using federated learning metrics and here you will be using normal uh, machine learning model here you will be creating a federated learning machine mo model so there are a few differences between your traditional process and uh, this particular tutorial so we started with installing the external packages then we installed imported the libraries which is required and uh, this is a rough overview of what is going to come back in the uh, session and uh, this is the tutorial see since we are using since we are using this uh, particular mns data sets which is already pre-built in uh, tff ecosystem we can just use call this uh, load data to automatically load it uh, so if you are uh, there are five to six data sets already given to you and i'm using one of them which is the emns and um, the tff simulation dot data sets i'm just using the load for data method to load the data set i'll get two parameters one is a train data set and the other is the test data sets now i'm just looking forward. i'm going to explore how this uh, train data set looks like i'm using length function to uh, print out uh, the number of uh, clients and the client ids and then um, i'm just taking one client and uh, the client data of one particular client which is client zero and i'm just uh, checking out the specification of the data set here and uh, so if we are using something called tensor we will be using something called tf dot uh, data set and uh, if you're not uh, familiar with uh, tf dot data dot data set uh, tf dot data is a tensorflow is a part of tensorflow input pipeline when you convert your data into tf dot data dot data set it comes up with lot of methods and functions which is very comes in very handy for example it comes with lot of functions like map uh, pre wedge you buffering and all these things you don't have to write utility functions to do all these operations uh, if you want to convert it into a tier the tf dot data dot data set you can make use of all these utility functions and do your input processing pipeline very effectively you can build input processing pipeline very effectively and uh, the pipeline which you build using tf dot data dot data set sits very well with if you're building a model in tf eras or um, Keras API, it sits very well with that uh, kind of a model pipeline. The reason is because you need to choose a pre effective pre-processing pipeline which will fit well with your modeling pipeline. So what if, uh, you know, you're not uh, choosing an effective input pipeline, the data is getting too long to fetch and all, you use a lot of uh, computation time in that. So it's very important you need to, uh, to even if you're not going for tf.data.data sets, you need to choose some kind of an effective data input pipeline. So tf.data.data sets comes as a part of TensorFlow ecosystem. And uh, uh, so one of the advantages which I said is it comes with a lot of features and utility functions which makes our life easier. So here uh, one of the thing is I want to just print one of the element the, from the client uh, first, the zeroth client data. See there are multiple clients and for the zeroth client data I'm taking and I'm printing one of the one element. For this, I'm just using these things where features like next or fighter, I'll be able to get the first element and I'm just printing out the element. So these are some of the features which comes with it. And uh, now I'm just printing out uh, all the data, random data, the data from the uh, client and uh, not just the first element. So I'm taking the 40 elements. I'm using take function to take 40 elements and I'm just printing it out and now i have uh, i'm just taking five clients 
and uh, from the five clients for first five clients there are a lot of clients like 3393 clients data is there but i'm just taking for first five clients and i'm seeing how the data is distributed so if you take mns data what for people who are not into machine learning mns data is nothing but handwritten digits uh, so this handwritten digits is from 0 to 9 you have handwritten uh, digit images so i'm just seeing for the first five clients how the data is distributed if you see zero so those these many uh, zero images are there so many one images are there so many two images so zero to nine images how it is distributed amongst these different clients so i'm just exploring so the second part as we discussed earlier we are just exploring the data set uh, because this is a simulated data you have simulation of multiple clients we have 3393 clients data and out of which see we are just doing a small experiment not all the 3000 clients will be able to connect at the same time at any given point there will be five or 10 clients only connecting at the time we are just exploring first five clients and we are we are exploring data how the distribution of data looks like and all that we are just printing we are taking non iid data and uh, we are printing out the uh, data client to uh, images client three images and we're just printing out the data so this part is about exploration of data and once we explore the data uh, what we're going to do is we are going to do some pre processing i already told you some of the advantages of tf.data.data sets it comes with a lot of utility functions which makes our life easier when we are building an input uh, data pipeline and uh, some of the utility functions i told you is shuffling the data set if you want to make it randomized then pre fetching saves you lot of memory so you know while you're performing an operation you can go and pre fetch the next set of data which is going to be processed that way you're doing a parallel computation and saves you lot of time and creates you much more uh, brings much more efficiency as well uh, so these are some of the advantages here so i am setting up some of the parameters like number of clients i'm dealing with 10 clients number of epochs the batch size how much of uh, data batch of data i'm going to deal with at a single point and is 20 and shuffle buffer pre i'm setting the hyper para parameters here and i'm creating a um, utility this pre process is just a utility function where this function what i do is this is an image is a 28 by 28 pixel so i'm going to flatten this 28 by 28 pixel into a flattened array of 784 so this is what this pre process function does once it flattens it out i'm just putting this data set through a series of operation first i'm randomizing it then i'm setting uh, it how should be batches that's a uh, batch and um, map function the pro user see these are all part of tf dot data so if you don't have understanding of tf data it might be a little uh, you know totally new to you but don't worry about it this tf dot data part you have a lot of videos online and you have uh, videos from the tensorflow website itself which will teach you like what is tf dot data how to use it and all that and you also have a deep learning dot ai specialization where you know this is the entire course dedicated to a uh, building input pipeline so you can also refer to those courses uh, so for now you understand tf dot data has got a lot of utilities which will make your life easier that's it so there's a utility function here which is pre processing what it does is it flattens the array and applies a bunch of uh, utilities for you map here is if you I want to apply a particular function uh, to multiple all the elements in the batch then you go for map function and prefetch as i said it prefetches the data so it enables you to do parallel computation so these are some of the bunch of utilities uh, functions which you are going to call and do a certain pre processing so pre process is a utility function which accomplish this and uh, Uh, we are just uh, printing it out and uh, seeing if it worked and all that. And uh, so far, uh, what we have done is we have uh, used already existing simulated data set, which is pre-built for us. We explored that data, and once we explored it, uh, we also saw uh, after exploring the data, we were uh, seeing doing of some pre-processing and all that. Till now, exploration and pre-processing is complete. so what are we going to do next 
next we are going to do a pebbled federated data you need federated data and you also need a federated learning model and you also need federated learning evaluation metric these are three things which we are going to focus next so uh, i am writing another utility function which is to uh, create utility function which will take the client id and the client data and it will convert it into a federated data internally it is calling this pre process utility function and uh, so this utility function will take the client data and the client id and it will convert it into a federated data internally it is calling the pre process function and all this utility functions which we wrote that's all it does and now uh, i'm just uh, Uh, taking uh, just uh, randomly taking 10 clients and num clients is a variable which have initialized to 10 so i'm taking 10 clients and i'm converting each client data into a federated data uh, to be used by my federated learning algorithm and i'm just printing the values and checking it out and all so all of you this is a um, intermediate level session so it is an assumption that you already know deep learning and you already know tensor flow this is a tensor flow session and deep learning session so there is a basic assumption that you already know deep learning and you already know how to build models using uh, tensor flow tf dot keras so this is how i build a simple model using tf dot keras i'm just having a sequential layer and then i'm having a, this is like the basic the bare bone uh, model where i'm just having one input layer one dense and one soft max layer i'm just creating a bare bone layer and uh, this is normal uh, traditional way how you create a layer tensor flow model in tf dot keras and then you do the training and all this is a normal uh, Way way you create a model, and uh, and then you start training it, and then you so these are like uh, these are basics of deep learning and how to do it and i uh, do assume like everyone present here uh, this is an intermediate level session so everyone knows how to create a model and how to basics of deep learning and all that and uh, so i'm just creating a model and then fit, uh, setting the parameters what is optimized what is loss what is metrics and i'm fitting the model so this is the part now this is basic thing how do you create a keras model but what i want here is i want to create a federated learning model so how do i do that i have an api which i can use to create a tff learning model tensorflow federated learning model so this is uh, i'm going to create an instance of tff learning model so i'm uh, coming and i'm creating a instance of tff learning model and i'm setting the input specifications i'm setting the loss metrics uh, so the keras model which i created uh, before i'm using that i'm wrapping it with this tff learning model uh, interface once i wrap it i'll be able to get federated learning uh, tff uh, learning model in order to get a tf convert this uh, keras model into tff learning model i'm using a wrapper and the wrapper takes all these parameters and you know i'm creating a tff learning model here and uh, one more thing which you need to do is see you are training your uh data initially in the server with some random data and then you're passing it to the mobile uh, where it is locally trained and uh, so there are two things one is the server training also happens the client also the training happens right and uh, so this uh, client will have a different learning rate and the server will have a different learning rate the whole process how this happens you know from the server to the client where it gets trained and all the client will send the local models where it will get averaged and then again it is sent back the whole process back and forth back and forth we are we, we are able to accomplish using certain apis uh, which does the job for us you need to do or understand what are the things so you need to create an uh, instance of something called tf of learning build app federated average processing i'm going to create an instance of this particular interface and it takes parameter which is the model where federated learning model where we created before and for client i'm setting the uh, learning rate and for server i'm setting the learning rate 
and once i create this uh, iterative process this iterative process always has two functions for me one is the initialize and the next state what happens when i set the initialize and what happens when i just create the next state it has always got two properties so i can create an iterative process using this api tff learning build federated averaging process and this iterative process has got two uh, properties one is the initialize and next whenever i call this initialize method what will happen the server state and everything will be initialized when i call this next state what and all happens in next state is uh, the from the server the data goes to local thing and the local the training happens once this training is complete it will go back to the server and at the server the federal the data model will come from multiple clients a federated averaging all this happens in the next so there are two properties for your iterative process object and uh, those two properties are initialized and next state what happens when you call initializes your server state and everything will be created and uh, so i'm just calling initialize method iterative process dot initialize all my uh, server state is initialized and everything with regards to the issue of server state all the things happens here and uh, when i call this um, uh next state what actually happens in next state is all the process the remaining process and everything happens in the next state uh, so this is about creating federating learning model and create how to train federated learning model and i'm using tensorflow to visualize the metrics and see how the training happens convergence and you can just experiment with different uh, values para parameters there <sighs> and uh, finally we have come to a uh, tensorflow evaluation so in order to create a tensorflow evaluation function again there's an api tf of learning build federated evaluation where i create a uh, tensorflow federated evaluation computation and uh, so once i create a particular instance of federated uh, uh learning evaluation the other things is going to be uh, similar i'm just going to evaluate the test data and uh, the metrics are uh, in there so this is a nutshell uh, how uh, you know training the basics of uh, this lot to it see uh, you can create your own uh, custom federated learning algorithms and uh, there's more to federated uh, core api and there's more to federated learning api i'm also a beginner to this topic i'm not an expert in this topic i've just this is my second session and i'm still uh, learning so <laughs> i'm not the ex i do not have any expertise in this area uh but uh, this is a quite advanced topic and uh, little gets complex as you go uh, deeper and deeper and so you have the official uh, tutorials here and uh, you know in the official tutorials you have uh, sufficient uh, you no know, documentation to get you up and started with the relic and of examples for you to so you here you have you know how to go further you have how to build your own federated learning algorithm how to build a custom federated learning algorithm how to build a high performance simulation how to build a tff for federated learning research in all these uh, uh, you know tutorials you have uh, here uh, so if you want to learn further i mean it can get complex a uh, little as you go deeper uh, you know uh, it can get complex but uh, here it is and uh, once you finish this how to create your own simulated data sets how to create your own algorithm there's a lot to learn in this topic this is just a brief introduction to introducing what tensorflow federated is and a uh, sh short demo of what uh, how the entire ecosystem works and a very basic example demonstration Um mm, so we have come to the end of the session if there are any questions i'm not an expert in this field but if there are any questions which i know the answer i can answer and if i don't know i can note down the answer questions and i can get back to you
या हेलो हेलो उषा थैंक यू फॉर दी टॉक इट वॉज अ रियली इंसाइटफुल टॉक सो वी हैव क्वेश्चन सो आर यू आर यू सींग द क्वेश्चन इन दिन फील्ड और शुड आई Uh, yeah yeah uh, uh so are there any uh, privacy preserving techniques involved in uh, tff uh, so you can uh, see uh, the you can uh, install this privacy preserving techniques component as you go deeper you know when you deal with your own customizations and all that you can start incorporating this privacy preserving uh, component and all that the basic example which we saw with doesn't have uh, but you have ability to customize and you have ability to incorporate something called tf privacy and all is there you can build build a plug in these components as you build your own Uh, custom uh, layers custom algorithms and all that so it's there uh, but it can be done as in advanced part you will be uh, dealing with how to incorporate uh, privacy preserving and all that and uh, why do we have uh, two optimizers so uh, initially uh, the training uh, you know first uh, the model when it is getting created you have a random data which is similar in representation distribution to the client data and you uh, simulate in this uh, first time you train your model in the uh, you know a random data uh, which is similar in distribution to the all the client's local data and first time the training happens in the uh, server and this trained model is what is being sent to the local server just like how you know you take a normal neural network training so initially you set up a random values for your weights and biases and then you sent it right you propagate the values and do this back and forth again right the same way first time the training happens in the server and that's why you have uh, two uh, you know uh, uh, learning weights Yes, yeah, so in the Q and Q and A field, uh, there are also many questions. So I will just. Uh, does DFF uh, support uh, GPU? Uh, see again, it uh, if you uh, say uh, TensorFlow ecosystem has got something called TF dot distribute API. Since TFF comes from the TensorFlow ecosystem, there is definitely an access to uh, TF dot uh, distribute. You can make use of TF dot distribute. uh but when you take gpu here it is going to be gpu on the edge so your edge devices are going to get trained so your edge devices i think there are a lot of edge devices which comes with gpu uh, whatever coral.ai is a company from google brain which deals with edge tpu again it's a part of the google group of companies it deals with edge tpus right so i uh, t- there is a api called tf dot distribute api which should be able to help you with distributed training whether you are using uh, multiple cpus or uh, gpus or tpus all these things you can accomplish using this tf dot distribute api again that's part of the tensorflow ecosystem but uh, whether it supports or not there are not enough uh, documentation here so how exactly it is implemented and all that uh, i'm not sure there are very few tutorials out there uh, so that's something which you should experiment on your own and uh, yeah so garima garima asked that uh, how it is different from t- traditional uh traditional modeling is uh, traditional modeling your data you don't send your uh, data to the uh, client and right in traditional modeling all of it happens in the server cloud uh, in your cloud you have your data and your cloud you have your model and all the model training happens in the cloud and model inferencing also happens in the cloud uh so that is how it is different but here the data go uh, doesn't go to the uh, cloud uh, the server cloud it is there in the user system so my mobile data i have my data in my mobile i am not sharing my mobile data to the uh, external server the model will come to my mobile and it will get trained and once it, so when it gets trained and the trained model alone i'll be sending back i'm not sending any data from my mobile to outside so the data will stay in my mobile phone only so that way there's a lot of in, implicitly you are achieving privacy as well yeah so uh, another question by priya brata das uh, she asked uh, priya brata das asked can we use collab for learning uh, deep learning or are there any other platforms to try out deep 
so you can use collab to learn uh, deep learning uh, so uh, you can use uh, collab to use deep learning and uh, it is like uh, i think it is a great resource with uh, free tpus unlimited tpus free unlimited gpus and you get uh, 13 gb to 11 gb ram it's a great resource i i take all my workshops and collab only so it's a great resource to learn deep learning for sure uh madhura joshi in a follow up to your previous answer says that i recently worked with it in collab and it didn't recognize gpu I... so so if you want to uh, change your run time in uh, collab and uh, see one more thing is uh, you can go to change run time type and you can change your run time here one more thing is you need to uh, initialize for tpu there is a set of code which you need to write that initialization code and all that i hope that answers the you need us for example yeah i'm going to my kaggle account see my kaggle account I, you won't be able to see this notebooks because i have kept it as private uh, but i'll just show a recent workshop which i've taken which i'll show you for tpu the same thing works for gpu as well uh, one minute I think you are also a Kaggle grandmaster. So, folks attending, please check out our check out Usha. Yeah, yeah. Please follow me on Kaggle. It's Kaggle dot com slash Usha Rangaraju. Uh, I made all my notebooks private because uh, I'm just uh, these are tutorials which are incomplete, which are, we are reworking on this tutorial. So we are not making it public right now. But uh, so I'm showing this for you now. But uh, you won't have access to this notebook if you uh, if you just check out. I'm just showing for the for the doubt which you asked. What is your doubt? see for this example if you take this this is again a private notebook and uh, so this tpu this is a piece of code i told you tf dot distribute is an api which you need to use to initialize the tpus and all that so tpu has got some uh, this is a cut copy paste you can default use this for every particular thing so uh, you, you need to write this tf dot distribute code for it to work you might not have used that that's why gpu is not getting used or something like that this is for tpu the same thing exists for gpu as well hello hope that answered your question yes yeah, so another question by madhura joshi that uh, is there any other framework that we can use for implementing federated learning uh, so there are a lot uh, uh, pyshift pyshift from open mind and uh, pytorch also has got some uh, other uh, it's supported by uh, pytorch i think there are a lot of other uh, frameworks outside tensorflow federated one a lot from the open mind which is again a uh, 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 open source community which uh, works on the privacy preserving area and the federated learning area extensively and is quite famous for it there are a lot of other frameworks one thing which i remember is pyshift a uh, pyes uh, ft so this one is there there's a, if you just dig through it you will find lot of other uh, you know frameworks as well there are lots okay, okay so another question by shrinivas uh, that uh, any other deep learning platforms to learn dl apart from deep learning dot ai so he he's uh, so the questionnaire is saying that your voice is breaking so can you post link okay so if you just say um, udacity udacity is a good platform to learn deep learning if you uh, don't want, like uh, the deep learning dot ai see uh, there are a lot of free resources which you can use see uh, the free resources are um, you can use um, the resources from like uh, the freely you can learn using this uh, or to say uh, what is uh, 
freecodecamp.com. So first, when you start learning, always see what are the free resources which you can uh, learn. So free code camp for any topic in data science, you have tutorials already, and it's a free, and it is taught by Google engineers. They do, just don't get any instructors; they get only top instructors like Google instructors, uh, people who have highly accomplished only. Here you have tutorials for learning machine learning, linear algebra, statistics, and a full course on deep learning. Everything from basics, whatever related to data science, and not just data science. You have related to programming also. This is some free resources which is available. There are a lot of free other tutorials like um, Krishna Ayer, and there is another person called Sri Vatsan Srinivasan who is an MLGD. He has a channel called AI Engineering, where uh, AI Engineering also he covers um, all the related to uh, you know all the tutorials related to data science free. Uh, so you can make use of these free tutorials first. And there's another tutorial which I quite like is Deep Lizard. So she is a very excellent uh, uh, trainer for. Uh, see, this is you can uh, first make use of the free resources and then you can go for the paid ones like Udacity and all. Uh, this AI engineering Deep Lizard is my favorite. Uh, she uh, really explains well and uh, uh, so she her uh, way of teaching is very good i quite like the way she used visualizations animations and all so she's my uh, favorite uh, youtuber and uh, you these are some of the things free resources itself you can get a lot from deep learning some of my favorites i've shared uh, if you dig through it you will be able to get a lot of other uh, you know materials as well so another question by uh, Ravind is uh, typically what would be the learning rates on the server side? I assume it will not be as I has mentioned. Uh, so this is just a toy example. I mean, uh, don't uh, you know compare it with anything which is going to happen in real life. And uh, so the learning rate in uh, so, so I I am I'm, I'm just looking at what the learning rate is given here. So it will see all these learning rate and all optimization, the giving these values and all it uh, depends on your use case to use case. So there is this is just an example for you to give you how the framework works. So I told you this federated learning concept, different APIs, how all these components sits together. So this is just an example, toy example for you to see the framework, how these components and uh, the learning. The, these are just arbitrary rates, which is just written here. Yes, so I think this is a good question by Garima that how it, how it's different from lazy computation happening in um, So again uh, park splash uh, spice park is uh, uh, I'm not sure of the uh, lazy computation part, but uh, whatever uh, distributed computing part which is involved there in your Pice Park or any big data training ecosystem you take, big data ecosystem you take, Hadoop or uh, whatever Storm or whatever it is. And all of the training happens, uh, see, uh, when you take a big data ecosystem, anything, any big data ecosystem you take, all your big uh, data ecosystem, you have the data and the model which sits on the cloud. So here it is not like that. Here the whole uh, point of federated learning is your data, your mobile data is with you. Nobody, you are not sending your mobile. This is just a basic example I'm telling. So for example, a hospital has a patient records. The hospital has a server. The hospital where all these individual patient records are uh, stored and uh, the hospital data will not go to the centralized server hospital data will sit in the hospital only the model from the centralized server will travel to the hospital get itself trained and go back to the centralized server the hospital data stays with the hospital that way like no patient is at risk of being exposed you know is data being sensitive data being exposed and all that so the whole uh, your big data ecosystem, whatever concepts, I'm not sure of this particular co concept called lazy computation in specific what it deals with, but I'm just giving you a generalized uh, 
you know definition of how it compares with other uh, big data ecosystem training is whatever uh, ecosystem you are using whether you are using storm or pyspark or whatever it is uh, here federated learning is the whole concept here is your data is stays with the client the locally the data training happens locally in your client uh, space so last question by madhura that uh, does every data we load has to be converted into tf dot data dot uh not uh, see for uh, if you are using federate tf uh, tensorflow federate it, uh, t then you will have to convert it into tf dot data dot data set uh, because you know the api certain apis which we use they accept input parameters the input parameters has to be in a certain uh, format so for example if you are going to take a new data set then you will have to convert it into tf dot data dot data set and then convert it into a federated data because the you are using their uh, pre uh, utility functions so that particular utility function will accept the input parameter and say but uh, see this whole tensorflow uh, for the tff is an open source so what you can do is you can take the code if you don't want to use it in tensorflow data says you all these utility functions are open source you can take them and you can rewrite that uh, code it is all open source available for you to rewrite and uh, recently i was experimenting with uh, and tensorflow optimizer and uh, there was incompatibility issues which we faced with the optimizer and there was one guy shubham singh or something uh, he has rewritten the optimizer he has, because this uh, official version is having some incompatibility issues he has rewritten it uh, so you can take the official version if you don't want to use tf dot uh, data set then you can uh, you know uh, rewrite the utility functions and uh, you know you can use a different format as well these are all open source this uh, mm, you can contribute as well if you are creating something new and one yeah this is my answer so uh, a person is asking for your uh, i think social links so i have posted your twitter on the feed session feed you yeah. can post your uh, another platform links on the uh, i'll share my uh, linkedin as well I'm active on LinkedIn and uh, Twitter, uh, so please uh, follow me here. So, as you post, I uh, also have a question that uh, does federated learning reduce the, you know, uh, does uh, it reduces the mo uh, the you know how to say this that machine learning models depend on a lot of data to get uh, better accuracy so does it reduces the dependence on data or it's uh, it's about you know privacy and ownership of the uh, of the data of the user? uh see uh, privacy uh, see uh, there is always a compromise since you are uh, since you are sending the data to the uh, local system and uh, the local user data he is going to have less data for sure and uh, but what you do is there are multiple users who are training on less data and finally all these models they are uh, we are using some technique called we are averaging these models out and uh, we are doing this process back and forth so that you know you get some stabilized model uh, so even if the user has less data there are multiple users who have less data and who are sending their models somewhere after this averaging technique and all that you somehow end up with a stabilized model and uh, so there is always a compromise in terms of uh, accuracy because you know unless unless a traditional scenario where you have huge volumes of data and uh, from multiple clients together where you train it you have a better accuracy rate there is always a compromise of accuracy there uh, but uh, you need to uh, take into consideration you know you are uh, having a trade off between accuracy and privacy so there is some trade off there is some accuracy compromises as well you are not get you you won't get that kind of an accuracy which you get in a traditional setting there's always a compromise but at the same time it comes with an advantage it has more private uh, privacy features and all that uh, so uh, in a scenario like healthcare data where the hospitals will not give you a data uh, if it's not uh, using a federated learning and those conditions and you know uh, you uh, there is no other way you won't get the data uh, because of security concerns in that particular continent or region then you can opt for federated learning with some compromise in accuracy for yeah. sure the user individual users will have less data so there's a compromise in accuracy for sure 
so yeah. this is my uh, linkedin profile one minute yeah can you post it in the feed session feed yeah sure so uh, do we have time for another question there is just one last question or yeah please tell me what so garima asked that fine tuning of pre trained models also is also doing same thing as federated learning so can we call those approach also as federated le- learning fine tuning of pre trained models uh see fine tuning of uh, pre trained models is different from federated learning fine tuning of pre trained models is called transfer learning you take a pre trained model and uh, you change the last few layers and uh, to uh, you take any pre trained model like efficient net or u net or whatever it is uh, you uh, retrain you tra- you freeze most of the layers and you uh, you know retrain the last few layers that's called transfer learning that is very different from federated learning so with this last question uh, thank you usha for this amazing talk and thank you everyone for attending and also stay tuned for uh, stay stay tuned for the conference and attend or uh, attend the talks that you like and thank you everyone for joining and thank again thank you usha yeah thank you so much for the opportunity and the organizers it's my pleasure giving this talk here hope you have enjoyed it uh, for people who have not understood a lot of things so uh, this is an intermediate level talk and uh, so if you are a beginner and something this will be overwhelming and uh, please don't uh, feel bad this is an intermediate level talk so there are many data scientists experienced data scientists who don't know what is federated learning there are many people like that so you if you if you are a beginner and you if you didn't understand anything please don't over, feel overwhelmed at all and uh, this is an evolving research field so don't feel overwhelmed and go be as whatever yeah. you are going towards data science keep putting that and you know don't let this affect you as what i would like to say thank you thank you so much i'm just leaving. yeah thank you everyone so i'm ending the session yeah sure